Hey YouTube, this is a story I want to talk about. And it happened in Kansas City, Elk Grove, Missouri, at 1 o'clock in the morning. I kid you not. And I was getting off my shift at McDonald's there on Elk Grove, right in that area. And I don't know what road it was on, but I was walking home that night on my shift. And I came across these gang members doing a drug deal, you know, transaction, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And, um, it was hard, you know, I mean, it was cold that day. it was hot. I just got off shift and earlier beforehand, before I got there, um, two cops pulled up behind me and asked me where I was going because they said I looked suspicious because I was walking at night. And so the cops harassed me for a little bit and before that. Then right after that, I'm like, okay, well, you know, no big deal, you know, I didn't really get too mad about it. You know, they just asked me for my ID, you know, where I was from and, you know, what I was doing. And, and I just told them, I said, I was just going home. I said, that's all I was doing. I said, I just got off work. I said, I was just going home. I said, I slipped down the block here. And I said, this is my path I walk. And he told me, the officer told me, he said, hey, just be careful. You know, there's gang members just laid out at night and stuff like that. In which, I thought, okay, you know, they just stopped me just to warn me on it. You know, that's okay. So, they gave me my ID back. I just kept on walking. The most scariest part of the night at 1 o'clock, not knowing where you're at in a city. But you know where your trail is, where you're walking, but not knowing the people, not knowing your surroundings. Well, I seen a drug deal go down. Two different gangs. One was a Mexican gang, some type of Mexican gang, and one was a black gang. When the minute they saw me, Walking on their road. They all scattered and went in to their cars. Got in. They all had guns. They drove up to where I was at. One of them points one at me and stops. Doesn't shoot it. But points it like literally right at my temple. And while he was in the car, while I was standing there. And like literally just aiming it right at my at my temple. And he says, Did you see anything? I looked at him right in the eye and I said, you know, if you're gonna shoot, just shoot. I said I have nothing to live for at the time. Cause I was living with the assholes. And he 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 said that wasn't the question. He said, Did you see anything? And I said, no, I didn't. I said, I can't really see that well at night anyway. I said, I, I can't barely even see the trail I'm walking on. And he was, he was like, the black dude rolled down his window in the car, had his gun pointed at me as well. He asked the Mexican, you want me to take care of him? And well, the Mexican, Black dude ended up saying, you're a crazy motherfucker by telling him to shoot. And I was just like, I just told him, I said, I didn't, at the time, I didn't have nothing to live for. And and the black dude looked at me in the eyes and he, he looked at me and so did the Mexican. They looked at each other and I'm like, you're not worth it. 
and you know you're here as a civilian and you've already been through a lot it looks like and that's what they said to me and they said we'll let you go but we know where you're headed if you ever snitch on us so having a gun being pointed on you you know you can't really use your martial arts if you know your surroundings very well especially if they're in the car but since I stay calm I stay cool I stay neglect through the whole situation something was looking out for me that day or that morning on my way back to the hotel room back to my shift because something was protected just to be able to make it home that night and which you know maybe God was looking out for me I don't know I mean I do believe in God but it's just I I don't know what was and but I would probably say that was like the most the first one was the part where two cops were harassing me thinking I was some drug walker you know disguising as a McDonald employee but they was literally just warning me you know hey be careful things are around this area late at night you know and that's all they would want but they did say I looked suspicious and when I got off work and but that was like the most dangerous part of my life that I've ever felt threatened real threatened you know like okay you know either one I might make it out of here with a bullet two I might not make it out of here a lot three if I run I probably just either one get shot in the back or two get shot in the leg or three whatever worse get shot back in the head so I just stay there stand still with both of their guns pointing right at me and I said if you guys want to shoot just shoot I said you know that's what you really guys want to do and I can see it in your eyes and like Dude respecting me, he's like, you know, you're one crazy motherfucker. And he's like, we ain't gonna shoot you, we're gonna let you go. So, when that happened to me, when you know when to learn to stay in a calm situation, stay calm, cool, center your mind before it reacts not everything has to be a ball but to fix so it's on how you say the words the person making them feel okay you're not afraid because you're already you know if he was going through hell already to where he was living at to get a gun pointing on you shit man that ain't nothing Especially when he had a bad day at his shitty job at a fast food restaurant a long time ago. Getting off your shift. So it was like. <laughs> when I got home, my stepfather, he was still awake. He was kind of pissed that I got home a little late. And he was like, where were you? I said, I got to hold up. And he was like, what do you mean by hold up? And I said, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. And... I said, I got harassed by two cops. Walking down here. I said, then, on top of it, I said, two gang members 
and they're pulling guns on me. But you don't act scared. I said, oh yeah, I am scared. I mean, I was scared. But did I have like a little bitch? No, I didn't. But the thing of it is, I said, it's like I said, you wouldn't believe me. And he was all like, my dad looked at me, he looked at it, and my, well, at him and said, he's telling the truth. And so when I, when my dad told him that I was telling the truth, he actually believed me. And he took, called McDonald's, chewed them out for the next morning, not letting somebody take me home at night in their, one of their cars to drive me home that late at night. Known it was that late. But I just told him, I said, you know, it's not McDonald's job to bring me home. I said, really, technically, it was your job to come get me. Or at least somebody to come get me to pick me up. But I told him, I said, at the time, I needed the exercise. I was kind of getting weight at the time. I was still a heavy, heavy youngster. I mean, I was like 160. No, I was. I think I was at 160, maybe, something like that. And then I kind of lost the weight. I went down to like from walking that distance. I think I walked maybe a mile about every day up there and every day back. And for the six months, and plus did an hour workout after my shift, you know. Because he would know, be like, okay, well, are you going to go work out? I said, probably not. I said, because it was like real late and I had to be in, in the next morning for work the next shift at five. And which I always hated working the one o'clock shift and turn around have to be in by five. But that was like, like I said, that was the most gang member, not gang member, but gang related incidents that I have ever walked, wandered into, wandered on in a city. And I said, but it ain't nothing like you see in the movies, you know, where you see, see a guy saying, hey, you gang members, punks, or whatever, and he says, get off my street. I'll fight you if you don't get off, you know, and it's not like that, you know. When you get a gun pointed on you, it's, remember, always stay cool, calm, don't panic, don't let them know you're afraid um, of you, and just do a little, little reverse psychiatry. Nine out of ten, it works. Do a little reverse psychiatry on them. You know, if they point one at you, just tell them to shoot. They'll hesitate. If you tell them to shoot, they will not shoot. Nine out of ten, if you tell them to shoot. Now, if you get a real bad psychopath, then maybe they might. But, um, I'm just saying. That's like I said. I'm just saying that, you know, if somebody would ever do that to me ever again, I'd probably just take the damn gun away from them and probably just pull the trigger on them and say it was self-defense. But, since I, there was more than one, they're all in cars. Oh man, had probably guns loaded, getting ready for action just in case I even tried anything. So that's the reason why I did it. So it's like I said, that night at one o'clock in the morning, I was even lucky to even be alive when I got home. And I just said, I don't know what, it was like I said, I don't know what protected me that day. Because I made a lot of bad decisions in the past. I know I was going down the road I wasn't supposed to be on. And 
made a lot of bad choices in my life that I'm not really too proud of. But, it, it, you know, when you know you made some choices in life that you're not too proud of, you learn to not do them again. So, that's how you do it. That's how you say perseverance. It's because, okay, okay, I messed up in the past on some things or choices I make. But if I learn from what I make and did what I did wrong, I won't make the same mistakes again. But say you didn't do anything wrong in that situation, I just stay calm. I say it's cool. And I didn't act like I was scared. And that's because I was already going to real anyway. And I just told him, I said, I just didn't have much to live for. And I said, you know, if you want to shoot me, to shoot me. And that's what I just told him. And the black, I, I, what, cracked, what cracked me up when I got home is just on how that black dude said, you're one crazy motherfucker. But you got balls. He says, we'll let you go because we can see in your eyes you're telling the truth. But we know where you're headed. So, just on how he said it, that's what, what um, made me laugh a little bit in my head. I didn't laugh at him because I knew if I laughed, while he was saying that, he would have probably shot me. So I know when to laugh and not to laugh. In certain situations. But, like I said, that's the only gun threat I've ever been in. That's only been in the city and everything else. And, looking back on it this day, you know, Wondering how the hell did I get out of that? And it was like this. Something could have really... Something was really, really watching out for me that day. And like I said, I don't know what, who, where, or what it was. But maybe it was my guardian angel. I don't know. Because... Looking out for me. I, I don't know. But something was protecting me that night. And I. Or it was just pure luck that I got out of, or out of there alive. So. There you have it. Just a little story. Tip. You know. If you ever go down a path where you see some gangs. Try to avoid them. Try to walk around them if you can. Um, if they try to threaten you. Do a little reverse psychiatry. Sometimes it might work. Sometimes it might not. Um, uh, stop them, say, hey, can I get through? I'll pay you a little bit if you just let me through or whatever, you know, give me a little money. Sometimes they'll do that, they'll just leave you on, you know. But that's just really literally my story, my advice. Um, or just try to avoid the area. But me, I couldn't avoid the area. That's the only area that I walked, that's the only path I knew. And I knew that trail really, really well, even in the dark, because I walked it so much during the daytime. And I always got pissed off my stuff harder on that trail. I would always walk, because I knew, I knew that trail really well. Through the day, and even at night. Because I didn't even really need a flashlight. But, as like I said, that was the only time that I had gang members, two gang members uh, from different gangs pointing gun at me in that situation and the only time a cop ever harassed me too um, in the city because it made me look suspicious um, walking down the street um, that's the only reason why I don't I mean I like cops for what they do but you can't really trust them. and but hey it is what it is no, they just do their job. That's what they're there for. Um, I like I said, I have nothing against them, but it's just that I just can't, I just can't trust them. And there are good cops and there are bad cops out there. 
But all it is is that they just want the money. Because if they can get some per pin, you know, they arrest, you know, that's more money on their paycheck. So there you have it. You know, that's just what I see, how I see it, and everything. Um, it's like the same thing with the ticket. You know, anytime you get pulled over, same thing. That's just more money they give you to get on their check for giving you a ticket. Um, but like I said, there's not all bad cops out there. There are good cops out there. The good cops are what makes police force look good. But if, you, if there are cops out there that are bad, there can be perks, and mostly it's most of these younger dudes that are officers, there are perks. But mostly a lot of people that I know in the police department around here in town, they're all nice. They ain't really all perks. I mean, so, and I have a response around here in my hometown. And so I'm not only talking crap about law enforcement in my hometown. I'm talking crap in Kansas City law enforcement because they're the ones that you cannot trust at all. That's all I'm saying. So I'm talking for signing off. Please still like, hit subscribe. Like I said, this is my gang related story that I've been in encounters with gang drug action going on. And but I didn't report it because I, I didn't want nothing to happen to me and my family. So, um, because they probably had connections, you know, okay, well, he's reported us, you know, we know who it is. And they would describe it, they could probably have some other people draw a person out and, and everything. And bam, they could find, they could hunt, they could go hunt, you know. But, so that's it, you know, that's like the only time I actually been in a gang related incident. It's just hey. I'm just glad to still be alive. It could be worse. So kinda of reflecting on that a little bit, you know, I'm kinda of like you know I'm still alive, you know, amazing. So there you have it, 7 John 4, signing off, train hard, train smart, stay out of gangs, respect the law enforcement, if they respect you, back. Um, say no to violence, always keep the peace. Train hard, train smart, do your research, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell. Hit all on the bell. Even hands a like, leave a comment down below. And like I said, God bless. Thank you. Stay safe. Peace.